What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on our 2013 Volkswagen Passat. Uh, we recently just took this bad boy in for a warranty repair and it's, you know, the heater core is a common issue with this. So VW has you covered till 120. But while it was there, the dealer, of course, is trying to make a buck and gave us a laundry list of items that we needed to do for the car, uh, brakes, oil filter, oil, engine air filter, cabin filter, needless to say, to the tune of 1600 bucks. So we're gonna show you how to do these common maintenance items and save yourself a boatload of cash. All right, here's all of our parts from FCP. This all, everything has a lifetime guarantee. So all of the air filter, oil filter, everything that we're changing today um, will have a, a lifetime. We got our uh, air filter, we got our oil filter, we got our pads. Uh, this is for another uh, project. Uh, we have um, uh, our cabin filter as well. So all OEM stuff, only the best. All right, so we're gonna jump on the back. Same thing, pop your caps off. I'm telling you, this dealer. Like, why would you put lug nuts that tight? No anti-seize. They never heard of it over there at the dealership. So we got one that they crank the crap out of. Wow. I mean, you got to get a cheater on here. I mean, literally. Anti-seize, have you heard of it? Okay. Boneheads. Okay, so step one is we're going to remove the caliper. So it's a 13 millimeter. It looks a little corroded. So uh, if that turns, which sometimes it may, depending on the corrosion, then you need to get a 19 millimeter on this side and then hold it while you loosen it. They put the brake line right in the way, so you have to use uh, a ratcheting wrench comes in handy because you can't really get the socket because like I said, the brake line's right in the way. So if the top one did it, then we're gonna assume that the bottom one's gonna do the same thing. So, yep, of course it does. So get your 19 there. Okay, make sure you have your e-brake off because that will frustrate you trying to take the caliper off. Okay, so I just get a little screwdriver and I just want to pry it back just a little bit. It just makes it, gives it a little bit of, of room so you can wiggle this off. These are gosh, definitely some corrosion. So this car came from Connecticut. I believe, so it definitely has a little corrosion. But basically, you can just set it. Up, up and out of the way. Okay, and these pads, they can get stuck sometimes as well. A little corrosion. Okay, they just pop out. These are still got, you know, more than 50% life left. So I think the plan is these have a little bit of wear. So we're just gonna do a light, a light cleanup on those rotors. And then we'll just scuff the, scuff the pads, get a new fresh surface, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so we're on the backside now. The front uses a 21 millimeter, but in the back, it uses a triple square. 
So that's the, the guy that looks like this. So it's a 14. Some people call it a XZN. Uh, some people call it a triple square. So it's a 14. And uh, you know, these are tight. So take your time. Make sure it's your triple square seated all the way. And it's really, really close to the uh, trailing arm there. So, so like I said, these are tight. Ah, damn. But we got it. Okay, this is what removes the carrier. So it has a super long bolt that goes all the way through the spindle. And that's what holds the carrier on. So got that one loose. Let's see about this other one. Now you guys might have a, a stubby. So if you have a stubby, it makes it a little easier. My set, I only have a set of deep. So, you know, sometimes you gotta work with what you got. So I got the top in, it's a little tricky. It's really close to the frame. So like I said, if you have a stubby uh, triple square, it'll probably be a little bit easier. <clears throat> I don't have any leverage. Ooh, had to get a cheater on there. I think, I think I got it. Jesus, no joke guys, this, that is tight. The more corroded, the harder it is. Three weeks later, we'll get the bolt out. All right, so we got the top one just about out. What I do is just wiggle it by hand as you're going, as you're taking it out. And like I said, look at how long it is, corroded. So we'll make sure and anti-seize it up real nice. So the lower one you can get with your Milwaukee, so. Okay, then after you got that other one out, now you can see it threads in there. So we got our carrier out of the way. Another rusty bolt. Last step, someone's chewed up this, so it's probably a good idea to replace that. Our rotor stay bolt. I guess we should have loosened that first, guys, um, when we had the brake on. That would have been a smart. So make sure and do that. Go ahead and uh, Pull up on that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure it's in there good. Okay, go ahead. Okay, there you go. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, guys, we got it out. But yeah, somebody went to strip town on that sucker. Not ideal. So thankfully we got it out. Save us from having to drill it out. That's always fun, but the secret is very simple. Just put anti-seize on it and you won't have this problem. All right, now rotor's off. Let's go take a measurement, see where we're at. Okay, so like I said, there's a little, little bit of wear, tiny little lip. Um, brand new, it's, uh, it's 10. Uh, I think the minimus, minimum is uh, seven or eight. So we definitely have enough to clean it up. So we're gonna take these down with the front and get them done as well. All right, so we got the rotors back, got them turned, just a light, uh, not even a millimeter in each, uh, each one of them to clean them up so they're straight. And so let's uh, get them back installed. All right, so I just wanna do a quick cleanup of the hub here. Uh, you have the rotor attachment point and then the wheel attachment point. So I'm just gonna put a little wire wheel onto my drill and just give it a quick cleanup. What that'll do is help prevent uh, stuff from getting stuck the next time. So I have the, the carrier. I just took it over to the wire wheel, just gave it a quick cleanup. Um, most important thing obviously is to clean these grooves. You can also use, uh, if you don't have a wire wheel, then you can also use the same kind of drill and do a cleanup in these grooves. You just wanna make sure that you get any corrosion or buildup here because uh, that's where 
those uh, little pad retainers go. Okay, so on the carrier, you have uh, two of these little slide pins. So they're just held in with rubber. So you just give them a little tug and you can pull them out. You just wanna make sure that uh, you get your, your brake grease and lube them up and put them back in and then just make sure they're fully seated in there. Sometimes they're a little tough to get it seated. There we go. Now we're ready to reinstall this bracket. Okay, so I just noticed a little bit of corrosion after doing the wire wheel, so I'm just gonna take a flat file and I just wanna clean that up a little bit. You know, you got some rust build up there. Like I said, you want these surfaces to be nice and clean because this is where that uh, pad retainer clip goes, so you don't want it to be jammed in there. All right, so for the rear calipers, you will need to borrow, rent, or if you have the, you know, the brake uh, caliper uh, set like this, then you'll be able to uh, push it back because on the rear, you're gonna need to take the number six and you're gonna need to, um, it needs to spin and get pushed back at the same time. So uh, I'll show you how that goes. So I, I noticed there's a little corrosion on the caliper, so I just wanna clean it up clean the piston up a little bit before we push it back. Just try to get in there the best you can. Okay, so we'll take our number six, uh, put it in the two grooves, and then take our tool, lay it in there, and then we're just gonna get uh, it lined up. Okay. And then we can just twist that middle shaft out. And then now we're ready to press that piston in. So you just wanna keep pressing it in until it bottoms out. You don't need to over tighten it or get crazy. Just go until it stops. You shouldn't really have much resistance. So we're just going until it bottoms out. Okay. There you go. Now we'll be able to fit the brand new pads. There's enough room to get it over the rotor. Okay, so we have our two carrier bolts. We also took them over to the wire wheel, cleaned them up because they did have a little corrosion. Um, you're gonna wanna apply uh, a little bit of thread locker onto these. Um, so I'm just going to put a little, a little strip. Okay, so before we put the carrier on, we're going to put the rotor on. I'm just going to put a little anti-seize onto our rotor stay bolt, have that ready to go. And then we can go ahead and uh, what I'd like to do is also uh, put a little anti-seize uh, around this rim. Some people use like the, the copper spray that works as well but this has a nice little brush. So I put some where the rotor attaches and I also put some where the wheel attached because sometimes, you know, even the wheel gets stuck. Uh, the rotor's obviously very common to get stuck, but the wheel gets stuck sometimes. So then just line it up with uh, your rotor stay hole, the little bolt hole, and then your, um, your T30 Torx that and we ended up uh, replacing these so we'll put the part number down below for everything we're using but uh, as you saw when we took them off they were a little stripped uh, we got them off but they looked a little sketchy so uh, we went ahead and just replaced them they're you know around a dollar each so just go ahead and put that on and it doesn't need to be you know crazy tight you're just basically snugging it so the rotor is held there, but don't get crazy and over tighten it because remember the wheel is sitting here. So there's nowhere for that screw to back out. Okay, so next up is our carrier. So I'm just gonna get that in position and you kind of get it lined up over and then we'll switch to the back side. All right, so we're just gonna get our uh, little triple square bolts into position. Feel around for your carrier. 
get it started. Okay, we got the top one started. Now we'll get this bottom one in. Remember this is the 14, size 14 triple square. So we'll just get it on there. Okay, so these are, we got the Loctite on. These are gonna be torqued to 89 foot-pounds. You don't have a lot of room, obviously, but you just keep clicking and 89 both top and bottom. Inside uh, the brake box, obviously we have our, our new pads, but you're also gonna get the, the new hardware and you're gonna get the new bolts. So they recommend replacing these. So if you buy a decent set of pads, these are some um, Paget, uh, you're gonna get the new caliper, you know, pad clips and new bolts for the caliper itself. So let's get those installed. Okay, so we're just gonna clip these um, caliper slides on so they just clip on the wing part is going to be sticking out okay so when you go to put it on it needs to be like this you can't put the I mean it's kind of hard to put them on backwards but they just clip onto place um, like this one you can't put this one on the bottom obviously because the the fin is that way so you need to flip it around and put it on the top Okay, all right, so we're just gonna put a little lube on each end of the pad here. This is what helps prevent squeaks. And then you're just gonna go at a slight angle and then push it into place just like that. Same thing on the back side. We're gonna take our second pad, lube it up. And you kind of come in at a slight angle. And then it snaps into place. Next step is we take our rotor and I like to do a little bit of lube on that piston. This is gonna prevent you know, that squeaking so we have a little bit of lubrication there. And then this is very easy since you push the, the piston back just make sure these are kind of pushed all the way forward. They're kind of springy with the rubber, but make sure you push it forward and then you can just get it into uh, position. So we're gonna take our new bolts and we're gonna get them started here. Just wiggle the caliper around to get it lined up. And then of course, your, this thing you know might start moving. So you just wanna get them started. And then we're gonna do the top one here. So. It, this one, you know, like I said before, you know, the brake line's right in the way. So if you have a ratcheting wrench, you're gonna have the biggest uh, success with a ratcheting wrench. Okay, so on, on this particular setup, uh, some of them have a nut on this side. This one just has a square flange and a 19 works perfectly. Uh, these new ones from Paget are 12, the factory ones were 13. So if you're gonna reuse the factory bolts, then just uh, make sure that uh, you know you put some Loctite on them and you shouldn't have any problems. But like I said, a ratcheting wrench. Here, this one you can use, uh, you can get a socket in there, um, but the top one is a little challenging because the brake line's right in your way, so. But remember there's, you know, these are brand new bolts and they have the thread lock on them, so they are a little bit tight. My wrench came off. It's kind of tricky to hold it there. 
I'm not sure why they switched to this style. Okay, we got that one snug. Let's go up to the top. Same thing. Okay guys, so I got my torque wrench in there. I was able to get a one inch extension on three eighths with a shallow socket, and I still have enough room inside the fender well. So I set my torque wrench to 22. So let's, yeah, it's not much. It doesn't need much. And now we can go to the bottom. The bottom you can, uh, you can access just with a stubby. Get your 19 on there to hold counter pressure and That's all it needs. You got the thread lock R in there, so you're in good shape. All right, just a quick uh, spray brake break clean. I mean, I, I always wear gloves, so not too many contaminants on there. And looks good. All right, guys, so I like to use uh, anti-seize on the lugs. As you re remember when they came off, uh, that a couple of them were really corroded and stuck. So this is just an easy way to never have that problem in the future. All I gotta do is just give it a quick little application and we can put the wheel back on. All right, so we'll just throw the tire back on. Once you get one started, then the wheel We'll sit there and you can get the rest on. All right, so step one, uh, all the common late model VWs have uh, either caps, so you either use a hook tool or the little tweezers. So just put it in, pull it out, this exposes the lug nuts, so you'll be able to get your 17 millimeter socket on there. Feels like the dealer got a little crazy with uh, the impact after he took the wheels off to send me a video, tell me how bad my brakes are. All right, so the first thing I like to do, I turn the wheel a little bit so it's uh, outside of the fender. I just get a plain tip screwdriver and I use it to just, probably just ever so slightly on it. That's gonna push the piston back just a little bit so our, our uh, caliper will come off easily. All right, so next step is we're just gonna pop the spring off. So you just uh, get a uh, plain tip screwdriver and give it a little love. Sometimes you got a little corrosion, especially if you're in the Northeast. But once you get one side off, the other side typically comes off, but sometimes it's, like I said, gets a little corroded and then it gets stuck. This one, it's got a little corrosion. All right, next up are, are the little dust caps for uh, the caliper bolts. So I just have a little pry tool and they just pop right off. They're in a rubber boot, so they come off easy. Next, take your seven millimeter Allen and I like to just break these loose by hand. One there. Then I switch over to the Milwaukee. Okay, now your caliper is loose. Actually, let's see, I didn't loosen it all the way. There we go. 
All right, so you take it off. The inboard pad is spring loaded, so it's just stuck in there with a spring, so you can just pop it out. The outboard pad here is just slides in, so it's just it's just sitting there, so you can take it off. So pads aren't bad. You know, the dealer says I had two millimeters. It looks like uh, um, about four, so about double what they say. And then what I like to do is you can get just a piece of wire for the caliper. What I do is just go like this, give it a couple twists, and then come up here to the uh, the spring, and then also give it a little twist. That way your caliper is not hanging on the brake line and causing any issue there. All right guys, so next up, you gotta get a 21 with a breaker bar. These are kind of tight, so you might have to step on them a little bit. We're gonna take off our carrier. This is what holds the caliper, and this is what is preventing our rotor uh, from coming off. So we have to take it off, get it out of the way. Like I said, it's a little corroded. We'll clean these up with the wire wheel. All right, so next up, to take the rotor off, we're gonna need a T30, and this is the rotor hold down bolt. Okay, thankfully it wasn't corroded. Sometimes you might need to use some penetrating spray, but we'll make sure and put some anti-seize on everything when we put it back together. Sometimes it'll come right off, and this time it did, so not much corrosion, so good job. All right, guys, so we got the rotors off. Uh, they look pretty good. There's a very, very tiny uh, lip on the edge, um, but roughly we're sitting at about uh, um, 23.8, around 24 millimeters. And the minimum thickness on this application is 22. So we definitely have enough room to shave a little bit and turn these rotors. That will save you uh, some more money. The OEM factory ones are about 75 bucks each, so 150 for the pair. We're gonna get these turned uh, for 10 bucks each, so 20 bucks. So we save $130 right there on the rotors. So let's get that done. All right, so we got the rotors back, got them turned, just a light, uh, not even a millimeter in each, uh, each one of them to clean them up so they're straight. And so let's uh, get them back installed. So we're moving on to the front, uh, same thing. Prep the hub. All right, so I'm just gonna throw this on since I wanna clean up the caliper. I don't wanna take it off and have to bleed the system and everything. So I'm just gonna throw this on temporarily for one second and uh, try to clean up the caliper a little bit, get some of that corrosion off. So I'm just gonna basically set this carrier back into position and then our, our caliper unhook the wire here. And then I just wanna set it back into position so it's kind of held on. We have our, um, you know, our seven millimeter Allen. We just wanna start a couple threads here. Okay, so basically I just wanted to clean it up a little bit, get some of this corrosion off. Just give it a quick, quick cleanup. Okay, so while you have uh, your caliper kind of just tacked up there, you're gonna switch to just the, the straight one from your brake kit. In this case, it's the number three. So this one's just gonna spin freely. So you can get your, um, your tool in there again. And uh, just kind of holds it, holds it in place. So just get your um, clip in there, spin this out, get tension, and then you're ready to just push it back. So uh, in the front, it just is gonna push straight back. It doesn't need to twist, so you can use the other attachment. So we're just gonna go ahead and push it back. Um, on, the, on these, uh, you can technically get away 
you know, using a C clamp. It's a little tough because the brake line is kind of right in the back, but it's still doable. But obviously if you can just go down to your local auto parts store, um, pretty much everybody rents these uh, brake tools. So you can just get that kit. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Just go down until um, it's flush. And now we're ready to just pop this off and start the reassembly. So same thing as last, as the rear, we're going to put a little anti-seize on the hub here, hub face, where the rotor attaches and where the wheel attaches. And you're never gonna have a problem getting that rotor off in the future. I get a little, little juice on my rotor bolt. T30. So just like the rear on the carrier bolts, we want to apply a little uh, thread locker. Um, we're using blue, obviously. It's not, doesn't need to be crazy. It just needs to be there. So um, then you get your, your carrier into position. And then we'll go from the back side. We'll just get our carrier bolts lined up. Our 21. Tighten them up. And these are also gonna be torqued to that same 89, the same as the rear. So we'll get our torque wrench set. Before we uh, put our pads on, I'm just gonna push these two pins out and we're going to just clean them up a little bit. Just get a little Scotch-Brite pad and just clean them up. We got our factory pads, Jurid. Um, this car, this particular Passat, you know, the 12 through 15, um, does not have a wear sensor. So we just cut that off and we chuck that. And then we can go ahead and get all of our parts lubed up. So we have our pins. Okay, so we just insert our freshly lubed pins you know, back into position. Okay, those are ready. Uh, front pads, I'm just gonna put a little, a little lube right here in the groove, in the notch. The outboard pad's easy. It's just gonna literally just sit there. The inboard pad, we can unhook it off of our, our wire there. And what we want to do is apply the same lube on that piston. Set that there for a second. Um, same thing on this pad. We're going to put a little in the notch there. On this pad, it has a couple of springs in the back, so you just need to get it lined up. And then once you get it lined up, it just pushes in like so. Make sure your little caliper slide bolts are pushed back out of your way, and then you'll be able to bring it down. Actually, one more thing, guys, I forgot. You want to put a little lube on the two tabs here in the front as well. So you'll get no squeaking. All right, so we lay it there set into position, and now we can uh, start our slide bolts. So we got our seven mil Allen, and we're gonna get those started. Okay. 
Okay, we got them both started. Give them a quick spin up. Our torque wrench and the same 22. Don't forget to put your plastic caps back on. They just push on. All right, now we can put the wheels back on. Okay, so uh, one last thing before we get the wheel back on, we're gonna put our little retaining spring. So what I like to do is just get uh, one side in. I just take a pair of channel locks and then I give the bottom end a little tweak. tap tap it in flush flush so basically you want it to be to be touching here and here and now we're ready to put the wheel back on all right so we throw the wheel back on and same thing as before we put uh, anti-seize on all the lugs so make sure you do that especially if you live you know in the north where you got snow and stuff. Here in Southern California, we don't have too much problem, but like I said, this car came from Connecticut, so um, definitely has some evidence of corrosion. All right, so next up is the air filter. Uh, it's pretty easy to get to. You're just gonna need your, uh, your T25 Torx. I have a little quarter drive Milwaukee here. There's eight bolts. So they just spin up and sit in place. They don't come all the way out. So you have one here, two here. Here's the third one. More over here. Okay. Then all you gotta do is just lift the whole assembly up and you can grab out your air filter, just like that. So, not bad. All right, we'll grab the new one. Looks like we're on uh, revision L. So we started with E and now we're on revision L, so it looks good. So all you gotta do is lift up, insert. Ooh, make sure it's all in there. Make sure it's sitting flush. And lay the lid back down. Give it a little wiggle. Make sure sometimes they, these bolts get sideways, they fall through. So just make sure all of them are straight before you get started. And snug them up. Do a little crisscross pattern. Okay, good. Keep in mind the dealer wanted $60 to do that. We bought the filter for about 25, so save some money right there. So next up is the cabin air filter. That's located in the passenger side footwell. So what I like to do is I just take the mat out of the way and slide the seat all the way back, and then we're gonna go from underneath. I'll show you. Okay, so you just have two uh, little uh, hand screws here. So you're just going to take both of those out. And then what I like to do, there's a little grab it, pull it. This is why I kind of take the floor mat out because as you come down then it wants to, it wants to hit, hit stuff. It's just fabric. So nothing crazy. And then all you have to do is slide the little door open. Okay, this sticks on the filter, but you can just slide it right off like that. And then you'll find some bugs and some twigs and all kinds of goodness in there. And then you just have to bend it just a little bit to get it out because it's gonna hit the floor. And there you go. 
All right, so we got our new Volkswagen. Obviously, we just want to make sure we got the same thing. And they put the part number here now, so uh, looks like uh, it is a little bit, uh, they've updated the part number, but as you can see, everything looks perfect. So let's go ahead and throw it in. Okay, so what I like to do before, just to make it easier, is just line up your plastic piece and slide it in. That way you can uh, stick it up there and get it in position, and then you will have to slide it back and then slide it forward again to lock it in position. All right, so like I said, just slide it up. You have to you know, bend it just a, ever so gently. Get it in there, but it'll slide straight up. Okay, and then once you get it up, like I said, you'll have to pull back, you know, towards the passenger side and then slide forward. That's it. So now you just got to put the little fabric back in. So you just tuck it back under, kind of goes under the side, under the lip of the dash here. Um, really like the glow box area. So I just tuck it in there, feed it in. Okay. And then you got all the holes that you want to make sure are lined up. Okay. Get all the holes lined up. Give it a little shake. Okay. And then you're ready for the little screws. And if you've done everything correctly, then those will line up. And these are just hand tight. Okay, and you guys have just saved yourself uh, a bunch of money. Uh, the filter costs $20, the VW brand. You can even get ones, you know, half the cost for aftermarket. The dealer wanted 80 bucks to do that. So $60 saves right there. We're underneath the car now. We want to do uh, the oil change. So we have to take off uh, this plastic uh, tray. So step one is you're going to get your T45. I'm going to remove these three. And then you're going to switch to um, your T25 uh, here. And you're going to have uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine. So a total of nine. So four on each side and then one in the middle here. And then all you gotta do is slide it back. So out of the groove here in the front, slide it back, and then we can expose our oil drain plug, which is here. Okay, so uh, we got our drain plug here. It's a 19 millimeter. So we're just using a, a stubby socket. Break it free. Well, that's draining underneath. Uh, we're back up on top. We're going to remove the, the upper engine cover. It's just held on by some rubber grommets. So you just give it a little pull in each corner. And it comes off. What to do is just uh, crack the lid on the oil fill lid uh, just to make sure that uh, we get some air in there so it, it drains properly. Okay, so I'm just going to take this little bracket off. This makes it easier. Our oil filter is there, uh, the black cap there. It's a 32 millimeter, so I just get a 32 millimeter socket uh, with an extension. I 
I like to just get a towel, place it underneath here. Usually there's not too much oil, especially if your car has been sitting for a while. And then this pulls out. Like I said, it's kind of tricky. It's a tight squeeze here. You know, this exhaust EGR stuff that's sort of right in your way. But you get it and you pull it out. You got that towel handy. And there's your filter. So after you got the oil filter uh, assembly out, you have uh, a couple of O-rings that you're going to need to get off. So I just use my, my little pick tool and you pull those off. You got one, a slightly larger one here. Okay, so you got the two lower ones off, okay? Then your filter will come off. And then you have um, one more around the cap. So take that one off as well. Okay, now you're ready for the new pieces. So we have our new uh, OEM filter. So inside your OEM filter kit, you get your filter and you get your three O-rings, small, medium, and large. Okay, so what you can do is, uh, well, I just put a little of this oil, lube it up a little bit, and you can get it started on the bottom one. Okay, and then you can grab your next one. Now that you have that one there, it should slide right over that one. And then go to the second groove. Okay, and then you can do the same thing with your cap. So your fingers are oily. I just get some lube on there and then go ahead and place it on your cap and make sure you're all the way down into this top groove here out of the threads. Just take your, uh, your new filter with the VW uh, mail logo up, slide it all the way in and then it clicks into place. Now we are ready to reinstall it back into the car. Insulation is reverse. So you're just gonna slide it back into that hole and just sort of, you know, you're targeting it to go right into the oil filter housing. And like I said, this exhaust, you know, has a little uh, heat shield on it. You got this electrical line. Everything is made just enough room for it to fit. And then once you get it in there, just give it a little wiggle. What I like to do is just take my socket with extension and just make sure that it goes in by hand. As long as you can do it by hand, you know you're not cross-threaded or it's not crooked. And then you can go ahead and tighten it up. After you get it snug, you just want to make sure you're basically it's at 11 uh, foot pounds, which you know is hardly anything at all. So it doesn't need to be crazy tight. That's what the O ring's for. Go ahead and just put the little plastic bracket back on. Technically, this uh, little wire loom goes right there. And we just tuck that back under. So let's put our drain plug back in. So we got our 19 millimeter, we got our torque wrench. Um, 
torque settings for the oil drain plug is 22. So now we're ready to put our tray back on. So you go back first, a little farther back, and then you can go forward and get those grooves in the front into the slots. And then what I like to do is just put one of the rear ones in place, just hand tight to hold it. And then you can start all the little ones around the edges. Okay, we switch over. Okay, bottom tray on. We got the drain plug in, we got the bottom tray. Uh, we got the car back lower. We're gonna pop off the oil cap, put in our funnel, and it holds 4.3 liters or 4.5 quarts, uh, 5W30. All right, let's go ahead and get the car back on the ground. Just set it there. We're gonna go ahead and torque these wheels on this particular model, this 2013 Passat. Uh, it's 89 foot-pounds or 120 newton meters. So most modern cars today are around that 90 foot-pounds. crisscross pattern. Here's a quick recap. Uh, as you can see, uh, not a lot of money in the engine oil changes these days. Pretty competitive market, so even at the dealer, you're not paying very much. The air filter, pollen filter, those are both easy swap out so you can save yourself some money there. Uh, the big cost savings obviously occurred with the, the brakes, the front and rear brakes. They recommended the rotors and pads completely changed. Uh, we went ahead and just replaced the pads and resurfaced the rotors. So uh, we have about 10% about, about uh, of the cost there. Rear brakes, they, funny enough, they were recommending just replacing the rotors and then reusing the old pads with the new rotors. So um, that's something that uh, uh, I would not recommend if you're already there and you're doing all the work. Uh, the pads are not that expensive, so uh, about $45, $46, so just go ahead and replace them. So that didn't make any sense. But as you can see, uh, grand total there, they were close to $1,600 in, in cost, and we got out the door for less than $300, so saved $1,300 by doing it ourselves. You could even save a little bit more on the parts cost if you went non-OEM, just went with aftermarket. So there's a lot of great aftermarket parts out there as well that uh, could reduce the cost. Obviously we purchase everything from FCP Euro. That way it's guaranteed for life. So any of these parts go bad and you simply send them back to FCP and get a brand new set for absolutely no cost to you. So it's a great benefit that FCP offers, so that's why we like using them. All right, guys, I hope we motivated you to get out there and work on your own ride. Don't pay those crazy dealership repair costs, uh, especially when you can do it yourself. There's a ton of resources out on YouTube to pretty much guide you through every car. Obviously, we're working on a 2013 Volkswagen Passat, but there's a lot of similarities across all platforms, so uh, have fun out there, and we'll see you on the next one.